Well, we are talking about uh, who is Jesus Christ, and we are in the part three of this series. And last week, I thought Pastor Terry did a great job. Come on, y'all give Pastor Terry a hand clap. Pastor Terry thought you did a great job looking like me. <laughs> we do kind of look alike. I tell people, we tell people all the time, yeah, that's my brother. Oh, you look so much alike, you know. But uh, he covered four things that Jesus said, I am, but he said there were seven. How many of you noticed he only covered four out of seven? All you melancholics out there. Y'all like, what's, what's the other three? What's the other three? Well, you're supposed to go look them up. So who can tell me what are the other three things in the New Testament with, that Jesus said, I am? Pastor Terry covered four. Who can tell me the three that he didn't cover? Raise your hand. Raise your hand. Who can tell? Come on, guys. Someone help me. Raise your hand. Okay, Cindy, since you were at all three services <laughs> and know the answer, what's one of them? The door. I am the door. He said, I'm the door. How many of you know there's only one way to the Father is through Jesus Christ? You know, there are many journeys to Jesus, but only one way to the Father, and that is through Jesus Christ, our Savior. All right, there's two more. Now, what were the other two? Come on, guys. Raise your hand. Right here. I'm the vine. Give her a hand clap. Good job. Good job. I am the vine, meaning that that's where it said that apart from me, you can do nothing. But if you abide in me, come on, someone. And so we need to be abiding in Christ. And that means we need to be spending time with him. And we have all kinds of tools to help you with that, with the five pillars. And you go on the app. And we just need to be spending time with the Lord because he truly is the vine. Uh, what's the third one? See if anyone can get the third one. Raise your hand if you think you know the third one. Anyone? Anyone? Right here. Well, he, Pastor Terry covered that. Raise your hand. What is it? Give her a hand clap. Come on. Yes, 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 yes. The light, the light. You know, nature itself teaches us about who God is. You know, right now, that's why Pastor Jay was talking about our heart to heart. We're talking about nature, but it's more than just about nature. It's about how nature teaches us about who God is and great principles in the spirit realm. Well, here, here you go. Here's to help you because he's the light, right? So he said he's a light, but then he calls us the light. But we don't have light in ourselves. The only light we have is in him. So you take nature teaches us this. You have the sun, and then you have the moon. And so the sun is the light. Now, the moon doesn't have light in itself. How does the moon have light? By reflecting the sun. And that's how we are still the light of the world, because we're reflecting the sun, Jesus Christ. But what happens? How can you darken the moon? When the world gets between the moon and the sun, it darkens. So we need to be full moon Christians. Can I get an amen? amen? So all of us need to be full moon Christians. We need to not let the world get between us so that we can be the light of the world. And so very good, Pastor Terry. They got all three of them, even though we had to cheat on one with my wife, Cindy. They got the other one, so congratulations. But who is Jesus Christ? Jesus Christ uh, the incarnation of God. Now, I'm going to be going over some doctrinal things, and we're going to be a teaching today, which is very important, by the way. You know, when we, before I come up, you saw that we sh shared a doctrinal vi uh, video that we do every week, because if you don't know doctrine, you can get pulled away. If you don't, if you don't know doctrine, you can end up uh, with the culture, you can fade in the wrong direction, uh, you can go off on your own tangents. Doctrine is very important so that we don't get deceived and we hold firm to the Lord Jesus Christ. Can I get an amen? But Jesus Christ, the incarnation of God, a central doctrine of Christianity and uh, Christian faith, which affirms that part of the Godhead took human form. Go ahead and switch that for me, please. Uh, that took human form. In other words, God, God uh, in God was, let me, excuse me. In other words, God was incarnated in human flesh, all right? This doctrine is based on the fundamental paradox that Jesus Christ was both fully human and fully God at the same time. And this is important to realize. In 1 John 4, 2, it says, By this you know the Spirit of God. Every spirit that confesses that Jesus Christ has come in the flesh is from God. 
There are a lot of even uh, groups out there, gatherings out there that call themselves Christian gatherings who don't believe this. They actually believe that, you know, Jesus didn't walk perfectly, that, you know, he really became the son of God at baptism. And then they, another group believes that, you know, it was uh, angel uh, Gabriel came upon him uh, at baptism. So you got just different thought patterns out there and you know that, hey, that ain't of God because he did come in the flesh. Now, he did that uh, for a reason to save us, but also that we would learn from that. So he didn't just come in the flesh so that we can, you know, be saved, but he came in the flesh also to teach us. And I want you to see this in Philippians 2. It says, have this attitude in yourself, which also was in Christ Jesus. And then he explains this, who as he already existed in the form of God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped. Now, let me stop right here for a moment. All right. Now, this is very important to understand because you have the doctrine of the world uh, that's out there that's demonic. All right. And you got to you got to recognize when something is demonic and when something is of God. And what's what I'm afraid is, is this doctrine of equality is actually in the church world. And it's wrong. It's where there's no, uh, there's no order. There's no one who is set uh, to lead others. That, that it's all equal. And, and really it says that Jesus Christ never even, he never even considered this as something to be grasped uh, as w- to the Father. But who did consider it? Satan. See, Satan wanted to be equal with God. But Jesus never even considered that something to be grasped. And so when you have this idea that you take away the uh, order of God on the earth, then you've got a, something demonic. That's how one of the ways I know, like if someone ever comes to me and they're like, well, you know, I just, I look at us as equal, as the same. And, and then they start saying, so I know automatically, you know, they say Mark. And it's, it's just, everything is, is about, you know, there's, there's no order, and as soon as I see that, I know that's a demonic spirit that's trying to communicate, and I don't accept that. Can I get an amen? Because that's not how it works in the kingdom of God. And it doesn't mean that everyone doesn't have value, because we do. We have value. It doesn't mean that you can't be one. You know, take uh, children and their parents. Uh, they are one family. They all have great value. But how many you know they're not equal? Yeah. Yeah. That's another problem in society. The kids think they're equal to the parents. Yeah. They're, they're not equal. Yeah. Boy, I didn't pay that electricity bill. Not you. Come on, somebody. Yeah. And, so there's, and it's the same way. That's why you have uh, disorder in where they're, you know, uh, police haters and all this kind of stuff. Because that's that doctrine of, you know, we don't want anyone in charge. It's, it's just, it should just be a free-for-all. And that is a demonic spirit. That is not the spirit of God. And so we have to realize that we have to understand that. And it said, but so he never uh, considered that something to grab, but emptied himself by taking the form of a bondservant and being born in the likeness of men. Now here I want you to see, and remember, we're supposed to have this same mindset that he emptied himself. He gave up the life he had so that he can live the life that God had for him. Come on. And that's exactly what he calls us to do, to give up the life that we thought we had. If you die to that life, you gain real life. Come on, somebody. So that we can live to the one he wants, but not just live to the one, be a bond servant. In other words, we are here to serve humanity. We're not here. I mean, he had heaven. I mean, it was heaven and I mean, he had it made, but he left that to walk in humanity. It's the same way. We can't hide in our churches. We can't hide in our houses. We can't just hide in Christianity. We we are trained to impact the world. So we have to be willing to leave those protections and comforts and go out and, and not just go out, but go out in humility saying, hey, I'm here to serve humanity. I'm here to serve the world by giving them the gospel. Come on, somebody. And being found in the appearance of man. It said he humbled himself by becoming obedient to the point of death on the cross. And so uh, his obedience was something also that we should have a mindset of. 
that no matter what, I'm going to serve God. No matter what culture, what happens with culture, no matter what happens in the world, I'm going to serve God. I'm not going to abandon uh, the mission of the Lord. I'm not going to abandon my devotion to the Lord. And even, even if it kills me. In America, we have a hard time understanding that. But I can tell you where they don't have a hard time understanding it. It's overseas in some of these uh, heavily anti-Christian countries. They, have a, they don't have a hard time understanding this. Because they have to serve God at the peril of their life. And many of them die because of that. I'm telling you what, that's real obedience. That's pretty, you know, we, we think we're struggling, you know, when, our, when we don't like our boss or someone said something about us that, it, that we don't like. And we, oh man, I'm just struggling. Man, if we want real struggle, go be plopped in a place where it's all Muslim. Come on, somebody. And they're going to kill you for your faith. And so our struggle is really very, very, very minimal. We really don't have real struggle, to be honest with you, in, in, that, in that sense. And so, but they were obedient. So we need to learn to be obedient no matter what. For this reason, because he was obedient to the point of death, God highly exalted him and bestowed a name uh, which is above every name so that every knee uh, will bow. Those are in heaven and on the earth and under the earth and that every tongue will confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. Remember that. I want you to see that. It's all to the glory of God the Father. He said, let your works be seen by men so that they would what? Glorify your Father who is in heaven. And so Jesus Christ is the bridge that bridges us to the Father so that we can be reconciled, so then we can go out and glorify the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ. Can I get an amen? But this mindset, he says, you have to have. So that's the mindset we need. Not a holier than thou, but a mindset that's not here to judge people, but here to save people. That's the mindset that we have to have. Now, how did this happen? When Matthew 1, we see how it happened. Now the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, was as follows. When his mother Mary had been betrothed to Joseph, before they came together, she was found to be pregnant by the Holy Spirit. Hmm. And her husband Joseph, so you see there's the Holy Spirit, and that's uh, that's how he became incarnate, right? It's the Holy Spirit that did this in Mary. It says, and her husband Joseph, since he was a righteous man, did not want to disgrace her, Plan to send her away secretly. Now, I want to stop for a second, and I want to give you a side dish. Who likes side dishes when you go out to eat? Yeah? I'm a, I'm a side dish man. What kind of side dishes you like? Someone tell me, what, what kind of side dish? Salad? Hmm. Casey? Side dish? Casey don't waste his time on salad, right? No, nah, that's good. Salad's good. What else? Macaroni cheese. Good side dish. Who else got a side dish? Dirty rice, yes. Who else? Mashed potatoes, yes. What is it? What did he say? Oh, a gratin. Gotcha. Good, good. Who else? One more. Right here. Corn grits? Really? For a side. Hmm. The Lord be with you. And so, who's, who said french fries over there? Someone said French fries? I'll tell you, that, that's a side dish, French fries. Come on, somebody. And not just French fries. Come on, you got to put that chili on it. And then some garlic on it. Mm. And then some cheese on it. You, you got to turn them 450 calorie French fries into 1,000 calorie French fries. Then, then you, you got something right there. But I want to give you a, uh, uh, just a, a side dish today. I'm going to give you a 1,000 calorie side dish today. When we're reading this about Joseph. Because, listen, uh, he was engaged to Mary. And then he finds out she's pregnant. And it ain't him. So this is a bad thing. Because in that culture and under the law, she can actually be stoned to death. And so, but Joseph, all right, if he wanted to play to justice, then he would, uh, she could have got killed. He could have really justified himself before them. But he didn't do that. He decided that, you know what? Because it said he's a righteous man, he was going to put her away secretly. And I want you to see why 
Our father made Joseph the stepdad to Jesus Christ. I want you to see his heart because his heart here was that I'm going to be merciful. Even though I could be justified, I'm going to be merciful. And I am going to, I am going to put her aside and not so that she is not harmed. I'll tell you what, that is the spirit of our father. That's the spirit of love. Doesn't the scripture say love does what? Covers what? A multitude of sins. And so we got to be careful when we live in a world that's in the exposing business. Because the world, the spirit of the world is to expose when someone does wrong. Oh, I want to know about it. And we in, a, in social media, I want to post, everybody needs to know the details and all this kind of stuff. That's the spirit of the world, not the spirit of God. Because love, even in 1 Corinthians 13, says love conceals. It says it seals, it conceals, it covers. I mean, you go all the way back to Ham when uh, Noah got drunk and was naked. Ham came in, his son laughed at him, and then went and told the brothers. And what did God do to Ham for doing that? He cursed him. Let me tell you, we all need to be in the covering business, if all possible. Can I get an amen? Where we're showing people love. But that was just a side dish for you guys, that Joseph was a righteous man because we did that. It's crazy. No military, when someone's wounded or does something, shoots their own. They try to help them to fix them. Can I get an amen? And in Christianity, we end up shooting our own. we got to quit doing that. All right, in verse 20, but when he had thought this over, behold, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream saying, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary as your wife, for the child whom has been conceived in her is of the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you shall name him <laughs> Yeshua, right? Jesus came after 1600. Some of you need to go back and watch part one, who is Jesus Christ. All right, so that, that word came out, but he's known today as Jesus Christ, son of God. So name him as Yeshua, for he will save his people from their sins. Now, all this took place so that what was spoken by the Lord through the prophet would be fulfilled. Behold, the virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they shall name him, what? Emmanuel, which translated means God with us. Now, that's very important, God with us. This was a prophecy fulfilled from Isaiah 7.14. Emmanuel was a title given to Jesus Christ, referring to both his deity and his nearness to humans. Now, you know, Jesus was able to come and live among us and experience what we experience. He experienced the frailty of our bodies. He experienced uh, relationship things. He experienced temptation, but without sin. Without sin. But he experienced it all. And that's why in the book of Hebrews, he says, look, guys, I can sympathize with you. I, I'm, I'm not, I, I, I came down. I experienced what you experienced. I understand how hard it is. I know that you need help. And, and I'm here to help you. And that's why he said in the book, of Hebrews, because he says, I was, I'm near, I'm with you. I was God with you. So whatever you're going through, I understand. And you can come to me, and I'm going to help you in that. I love this. Jesus Christ uh, often said in the Scripture, he said, I am the Son of Man. And then he would say, I am the Son of God. And so he identified with both. And I think we have to learn from that, where we're not just children of God, but we're also children of the world. In other words, it's, it's, we're going to please the Father, but we're not going to forget about the world. You know, it's, 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 Jesus even prayed. He said, I, don't, I pray that you not take them out of the world, but they just not be of the world. So God wants us with that same heart of a bondservant, of emptying ourselves, of doing nothing but what the Father's will is, to impact the lives of those around us. And so I love how he can identify with Father and us at the same time, and so can we. But because of sin, 
We cannot be good enough to go up to God. So he came down to us to take us by the hand so that we can go up to him. That's what he did. He bridged us. Can I get an amen? He brought us to the Father. Because the Father had sent messengers. He sent his word. He sent angels. He did miracles. But many, uh, but humanity would not listen. And many times the religious leaders, they misrepresented him. So Father sent his Son to reveal to the world who the Creator and Father of all really is. So what, what could not be done by all those other ways, he says, okay, I'm going to get it done by sending my son Jesus. And my son Jesus is going to represent accurately who I am. And that's where we see in John 14 this take place. Jesus said, if you have known me, you would have known my father also. From now on, you know him and have seen him. Philip said to him, Lord, show us the Father, and it is enough for us. Jesus said to him, have you been with me so long a time, and yet you do not, uh, you have not come to know me, Philip? You know, it's interesting that we can be with Jesus for a long time and really never know him. If you have not come to know me, Philip, the one who has seen me has seen the Father. How can you say, show us the Father? Do you not believe that I am in the Father and the Father is in me? The words that I say to you, I do not speak on my own, but my Father, and he remains in me and does his work. And so, man, here Jesus says, when you have seen me, you have seen the Father. Now, here's the gauntlet that has been thrown down to you and I. Who wants to be challenged? Not many of y'all. Who wants to be challenged by the Lord? All right, here's the gauntlet that he throws down. He's saying, okay, Jesus said, when you have seen me, you have seen the Father. We have got to live in such a way that we can tell our spouse, we can tell our children, we can tell our neighbors, we can tell our coworkers, we can tell our boss, we can tell the government, we can tell even our enemies that when you have seen me, you have seen the Lord Jesus Christ. When you have seen me, you have seen the Father. Oh, now wait a minute, Pastor Mark. Well, we are ambassadors. We are the representatives of God. We are the reflection of Jesus Christ. And so there's a great responsibility that, that lies with you and I, that we have to represent the Father and the Lord Jesus Christ to the world around us in such a way that we can say, when you've seen me, you've seen the Father, you've seen the Lord Jesus Christ. I don't know about you, but that that might keep you up a little bit. But that's what we're called to do. And so we need to endeavor to do that. Amen? And so Christianity is based on the premises that flesh and blood alone cannot reveal Jesus Christ to us, but the Father in heaven through His Spirit has to reveal Him to us. All right, think about it. All right, the, the world needed God Himself to come down and to reveal who the Father really was. All right, man, everything else couldn't do it. He needed God Himself to do this. Was well, the same way with Jesus. For people to be to, to have a revelation of Jesus, it has to be more than a secondhand experience. You see, I can give someone a secondhand experience because I have my firsthand revelation. And it's necessary to give it. But that alone won't do it. That's why it says one sows, another waters, but who brings the increase? God alone. And that's why the scripture says that no man to come to the Father except through the Son. And no one can come to the Son unless the Father is involved, unless the Father is drawing. And so here's the thing. I can give my my firsthand revelation to you as a secondhand experience, but that's not enough. In order for you to truly be changed and saved or for anyone that we're sharing with 
God's got to be involved. And it has to become a, a firsthand revelation, an 18-inch jump from the head to the heart. And this firsthand revelation is what God wants people to have. And it's what the kingdom is based off of. Look at Matthew 16. It says, Now when Jesus came in the region of Caesarea Philippi, he was asking his disciples, Who do people say the Son of Man is? And they said, Some say John the Baptist, others Elijah, and still others Jeremiah or one of the other prophets. He said to them, But who do you yourselves say that I am? Who do you yourselves say that I am? Simon Peter answered, You are the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus said to him, Blessed are you, Simon Barjoma, because flesh and blood did not reveal this to you, but my Father who is in heaven. And I also say to you that you are Peter, and upon this rock I will build my church, and the gates of Hades will not overpower it. I, I, want, I want to show you something. That, that the kingdom of God is based on God himself doing the last work of salvation in us. And then we, we I, I am, Yeshua won't do it. Yoshua. Yoshua is I say. Yeshua is Yahweh saves. We have to have Yahweh. Can I get an amen? We have to have the spirit of God in operation to guide us to Jesus. Is it the reason maybe we're being overpowered is because we're living on a secondhand experience instead of a firsthand revelation. May that be the reason so many people are being overpowered. Because listen, it's not, you can't believe because your pastor told you. You can't believe because your mama and your daddy told you. You can't believe because your auntie to, told you. You can't believe because, you know, the church said this. You, you've got to believe because the Holy Spirit himself, himself has come down and revealed to you who Jesus Christ, the Son of God, is. Then you will not be overpowered by evil. Because greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. Greater is he. You will not be overpowered. And that's the church that has to rise up from the ashes of the world. It's the church that has a firsthand revelation of Jesus Christ in their heart. We need a firsthand revelation of Jesus Christ so that we can walk victorious. Do you know him? Do you know him? The Bible says he's a king of the Jews. He's a king of Israel. He's a king of righteousness. He's a king of the ages. He's a king of heaven. He's a king of glory. He's a king of kings. And he is the Lord of lords. Now that's my king. Do you know him? No means of measure can define his limitless love. Well, well, he's in endurless form. He's entirely sincere. He's eternally steadfast. He's immortally graceful. He's impurely powerful. And he's impartially much. Do you know him? He's God's son. He's a sinner's savior. He's the centerpiece of civilization. He's unparalleled. He's unprecedented. Well, he's the loftiest idea in literature. He's the highest personality in philosophy. He's a fundamental doctrine of true theology. Do you know him? He supplies strength for the weak. He's available for the tempted and the tried. He sympathizes and he saves. He heals the sick. He cleans the lepers. He forgives sinners. He discharges debtors. He delivers the captives. He defends the feeble. He blesses the young. He serves the unfortunate. He regards the age. He rewards the diligent. And he beautifies the meek. Do you know him? My king is a key of knowledge. He's a wellspring of wisdom. He's a doorway of deliverance. He's a pathway of peace. 
He's the roadway of righteousness. He's the highway of holiness. He's the gateway of glory. Do you know him? His life is matchless. His goodness is limitless. His mercy is everlasting. His love never changes. His word is enough. His grace is sufficient. His reign is righteous. His yoke is easy and his burden is light. Well, I wish I could describe him to you, but he, he's indescribable. He's indescribable. Yeah. He's incomprehensible. He's invincible. He's irresistible. You can't get him out of your mouth. You can't get him off of your hands. You can't outlive him, and you can't live without him. Well, Pharisees couldn't stand him, but they found out they couldn't stop him. Pilate couldn't find any fault in him. And Herod couldn't kill him. Death couldn't handle him, and the grave couldn't hold him. That's my king. Yeah, he always has been, and he always will be. I'm talking about he had no predecessor, and he'll have no successor. You can't even teach him, and he's not going to resign. That's my king. Come on, is he your king? Is he your king? He is King Jesus. Come on. Come on. Oh, help me.
you to do, I want you to bow your head and close your eyes. I've given you the second-hand experience from my first-hand revelation. But if you in here, a second-hand experience from me is not going to be enough. The Holy Spirit himself has got to draw you. He's got to, he's got to pull on you. He's the one that has to awaken your, your soul. So if you're in here right now and you, you sense and you know that you don't know him, you may have been around him, you may have heard about him, you believe because someone told you, but you yourself, you know, you don't know him. He's saying today you can because his hand is reaching out you're like I'm not good enough he said you didn't have to be you're never gonna be good enough that's why I came that's why I did what I did so I can pull you up out of that some would say that's good too good to be true be honest with you it is too good for us but it is true so if you're in here you say man I need to know him I feel the pull the draw to know him or maybe you're listening online I need to know him or at jail you, you need to know him now is the time now is the time I want you to raise your hand and say pastor that's me pastor that's me I want to know him thank you raise your hand up high thank you Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Come on, raise your hand. Thank you. Right here, over here. Raise your hand up high. Who else says, that's me? That's me, right here. Yes, you too. Come on, who else said that's me? Yes, over there. Yes, over there. Come on, raise your hand. Now's your time. Now's the time for salvation. Now's the time for God to do something spectacular in you and through you. Anyone else for a moment said, that's me, Pastor. That's me. That's me, Pastor. Wow. I'm going to ask you to do something radical, but it's going to transform your life in a radical way. Those of you who raised your hand, I know we got leaders around you, and I want you to get down to this altar right here, and we're going to, you're going to give your heart to Jesus. God's just going to touch you. Come on, I want you to move down to this altar. Church, I want you to go crazy for these that are moving down to the altar of God. Come on, I got leaders that are going to walk with you and come with you. Come down to the altar. Come on, come meet Jesus. Come on, come, come on, church. Show some love in this house. Come on, sing King Jesus. Come on, King Jesus. Come on, come on down. Come on down. Come on, come on down to meet Jesus. Come on down to meet the server of your soul. Come on, the power of Jesus. The power of his head. The glory of his might. The Lord Jesus Christ comes here today to release you, to save you, to impact you. And your life will never be the same. In the name of Jesus, you are free. In the name of Jesus, you are forgiven. In the name of Jesus, his spirit be upon you in his name. In his name, you are free. In his name, you are delivered. Thank you, Jesus. Come on, those of you who are up here, the Bible says that we confess with our mouth and believe in our heart that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. We shall be saved. Shall be. It's an absolute. You just have to believe. Come on, those of you who are up here with me and all of us, we're going to pray this together. Say, Father, I believe in Jesus Christ as the Son of God. And today, I give my life to the King of Kings, to the Lord of Lords. I believe. Now change my heart. I turn from my ways. And I turn to you. 
Forgive me, Lord, for I have sinned. Cleanse me, God, with your magnificent blood. I love you, God, with all of my heart. With all of my heart. With all of my heart. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Come on. In the name of Jesus. You are saved. In the name of Jesus. You are forgiven. All hell King Jesus. Come on. All hell King Jesus. Come on. All hell King Jesus. We shout Jesus Christ in this place. He is the Son of God. He is the hope of the world. He is the light of the world. Let us go out, guys, and be the representations that he's called us to be. What a beautiful thing these have given their life to Jesus. Come on, give them a hand clap. I love you guys. Leaders, y'all get with these people. Love y'all guys. God bless y'all. Thank y'all. Hey, thank you so much for watching. Please like this video, comment if there's anything on your heart that you would like to share with the community. And be sure to subscribe and turn on your notifications so that you can be alerted every time we upload something new. You be blessed.